Hello and welcome to another episode of the Golden Hour Podcast brought to you by the Polar Pro Studio. I'm your host, Dave Mays, and sitting to my right is the one, the only, Connor McCaskill. How are we doing? This is the fourth time you've been on, maybe, maybe more, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like the resident, Dave doesn't have an actual guest, guest. <laughs> well, this is exciting because you've actually been back. We have been back, if you will. Yes. Um, Connor and I started a channel called Kinotika uh, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. End of 2017, I think, yeah? Feels like forever ago. It was forever ago. It was forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing around with a soundboard today. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a long time. And we, we started that channel. We got it up to like, I think, 80,000 subs. Or right around more, there, yeah. Roughly. And then um, I, you know, obviously moved on to Indie Mogul. You worked with Armando. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach Mayfield took over the channel. That's right. Um, this whole last year, I've been doing this show, but I've been working for my cousins. And I just went to freelance with them, still working with them. But um, back to YouTube. And Connor needed a place to live. That's right. I did. <laughs> and we have this home that we're really blessed to have where we, we've got a guest room. And I was kind of like, Hey, you know, it'd be awesome is if maybe Connor lived temporarily with us. Yep. And in return for payment for rent, we would make videos together. Yeah. So we're roommates now kind of <laughs> Yeah. in a and, weird, in a weird sort of way. And yes, obviously that's Connor, a single young man living in a home with me and my wife and my two kids. <laughs> it's been fun. So it's been interesting. The whole time, obviously, like before leading up to this, I'm like, just a warning. I've got a two-year-old and a four-year-old and a cat that's meowing at the door right now. Yeah. Uh, and Connor's allergic to cats. I am allergic to cats. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm internalizing my need to sneeze right now. So yeah, you're allergic to cats, yep. uh, which isn't fun for you, but you've been taking allergy medicine. Yep. Every day. It's been great. <clears throat> but we started just, you know posting on my personal channel, Dave Mays, which has about 6,000 subscribers. And we posted a GH6 top 10 video. Yeah. Did we post another one? Well, we've shot four other ones. Yeah, we, I know. But we never posted another one, did we? No. Yeah. And it's been a lot of fun. Connor and I working together again. And, uh, you know, if you've seen the old Kinotika videos, it's felt kind of like we're back to the old swing of things. Yeah. It's been really exciting to kind of like rekindle that side of uh of my brain the goofy fun side again yeah totally i mean uh, armando and zach both have their own styles obviously zach is is pretty goofy too that's true yeah i did do some editing <laughs> yeah with that, that's fitting that's, for yeah, for that's... a zach mayfield video um <laughs> it actually be all we sports resort sound effects <laughs> but yeah close enough what's up everybody i got the soundboard yeah you guys are probably annoyed already but i'm gonna i'm gonna use it sparingly i promise google can't sell me anyways so uh, we're back into the swing of things. Luckily, he only has like four more options. <laughs> yeah. So. And Connor's just staring at my soundboard right now. Yeah. But yeah, we, we started making the videos and, you know, just chugging along and, um, talked to Zach and we, we been hanging out with Zach a lot. Zach Mayfield, the previous host of King Antica. He's now working for Matt Diavella. Mm -hmm. Really cool guy. Really cool. Doing a lot of work for him and he's doing his own channel, but he stepped away from King Antica back in December, I think. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Very beginning of December. Um, and so I kind of asked him, I was like, what's happening with King Antica? And like really nothing, you know, no plans. Um, the people no. who own the channel were kind of like, yeah, we're kind of done with it. We're not going to hire another host. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, can I try to <laughs> try to figure this out. And Zach gave us his blessing to kind of go for it and see what we can do. And, uh, <clears throat> I reached out to my old boss and kind of just said, Hey, I'm back in the YouTube game. Connor and I are back. We have a lot of nostalgia for that channel and would love to see what we can do with it. And, uh, you know, two, three weeks later, basically we're going to get the channel. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I mean, to go from a 6,000 subscriber channel to yeah. now back to the 90,000 that it's sitting at Almost. right now, just about 87. It's going to be a, a nice little boost. Yeah, definitely. So if you're listening to this, um, the Kinetika channel will, you know, I, I don't know, whenever you listen to this and then go over and look at it, things may be different. But right now it's still Kinetika. We're still waiting on some things uh, to finalize. But by next week, I'll be posting on the previous Kinotika channel. But basically what I'm going to do is change the name to Dave Mays. That way it's just more clear and just kind of simple. Yeah. Uh, the name was always like 
confusing for people anyways. So. The name didn't really mean anything either. <laughs> it didn't mean anything. It wasn't associated to a brand or anything. So I'm moving this plant. There's a plant next to me. It's just rubbing up against my arm. It's annoying. Um, <laughs> okay. It's like, hey, plant. You suck. So <laughs> anyways, those are taken from my old music video parodies. Um, if you have seen that, I think that's from Gear Guy. Anyways, um, so yeah, so back on the old channel doing gear stuff. Uh, we've got a lot of ideas and we're still trying to figure out the workflow and the kind of, you know, what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to decide like how much content we're going to want to make because one thing that we were doing back in the Kinotika days, it was a lot of content. We were doing two videos a week yep. and a live stream. Uh, and you know, we weren't, we weren't not putting effort into those videos. That was, it was a bit of work. And so now we're kind of trying Full -time to be like, job, yeah. yeah, now we're trying to decide, well, what are we going to do? How much can we upload? Cause we still have other things that we're mm -hmm. doing. Uh, you're still doing stuff with Amy and Jordan. You're yep. starting to, uh, edit a course now. Yep. I'm doing courses for MZ. So if you're familiar with any filmmaking courses by Philip Bloom or Shane Hurlbut, they're on there. Yeah. Um, they reached out and we're going to start doing some courses. So my first course is a YouTube editing course. Yeah. It's going to be like what? Speed editing? Yeah. Speed editing yeah. by Dave Mays. Yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to so, be good. And then of course I have been just doing some other odds and end freelance jobs. I'm yeah. actually flying out tonight to Denver. Yeah. So go, that'll be cool. Skiing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's all work except for the skiing. <laughs> Never gone skiing before. Are you nervous? Uh, no, I'm not nervous. I'm going to, I'm going to take it easy until I... Know what I'm nice. doing. I'm not going to go straight to the, what's it called? The double black diamond. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That's very scary. Even yeah. for an actual skier. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not planning on dying. I'm going to start on the uh, bunny slopes yeah. with the kids. You'll be able to go, probably go up to intermediate uh, once you get the hang of things. It's, yeah. I don't, I don't think it'd be too hard. No, you're going to love it. It's fun. And Jim and, and Jeffrey uh, will teach you. So. Yeah. Yeah. The guys I'm working with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just been, that's kind of an update, I guess you could say uh, over the last couple of uh weeks i guess a month now it's been a month yeah. since you've been here yeah it's been about a month now which is crazy it's yeah, going by so, fast yeah it really has um yeah i guess it, yeah february 14th it was like valentine's day i think like around uh, that right time. around that time yeah um so things are going great and you know if you're watching the video this is sort of a new set <laughs> It's kind of silly. It's, uh, a, it's a rough set. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'm going to be utilizing the blue screen behind me uh, for some, you know, green screen. I say green screen because it's easier for people to understand, but it's blue screen, blue screen yeah. uh, keying and stuff for the course. So imagine we're... green screen and then make it blue. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, apparently back in the old days, like uh, with film, blue uh, was more saturated. It was easier to key from a blue. But then when we switched to digital, apparently green is better so who know not me <clears throat> that's why they switched to green screen but um and then in dune the movie dune they used a tan screen but they're filming on sand everything was tan i know but they what they would do is they would invert what's the opposite of of uh of tan is blue oh and so what they would do is take the footage and invert it and then everything was blue and then obviously you still had subjects and things that were also tan yeah a lot of people don't they, they wore tan clothes walked on tan ground yeah. and roughly were tan but, people but by having a tan screen rather than a green screen there was no spill issue oh so you light. didn't have any green spill so you had a nice tan spill that matched the sand yeah and for hollywood films a lot of people don't really know this they kind of just think oh it's green screen you just push a button and it's gone mm -hmm. for multi-million dollar uh productions they have it's all rotoscoped so People just draw an outline around each frame. It's right. extremely tedious. Yeah. But um, by having some sort of green or blue screen, it helps with that. So what they did is they took a tan screen, inverted it, which turned it into blue, and then made a mask on top of the actual footage. Wow. So they got the benefit of no spill, no green or blue spill, but still having a solid color. Is the BTS out for that movie then, yeah, I guess? that's the only reason I know that. Yeah, I was going to say. There was an article about it. You just it. know way too much about this. Is it on uh, YouTube or something? No, it was just a, it was just an article I read. Okay, you have, you have to share that with me. That yeah. sounds cool. But anyways, that was kind of a, a random little gear guy moment. A little gear guy. So. <laughs> but yeah, so Kinetika is back. The, the dream team is back. That's right. Um, we're going to be trying some different things. We've got some cool ideas and uh, I'm excited to share it with you guys. This is just kind of a preliminary announcement, yeah, it's I like guess. like a teaser. It's a soft launch. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to make a big fuss about it. No big promises yet. <laughs> yeah. But 
you know, we're doing gear stuff. Um, I know on this podcast, I've talked about experimenting with different things outside of the gear niche. And uh, I'm just going to kind of focus on what I know we can do well and make money mm. and then start experimenting in different ways. And even inside of the gear filmmaking niche, I think there's a lot of room for uh, experimentation with entertainment and different concepts that I was playing around with at Indie Mogul that I never got to fully execute or experiment with. So yeah, I'm excited to uh, get going. But you have some news. You just bought a new camera. Oh yeah, I do. I was like, what's my news? I don't yeah. know what my news is. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's see. What is the camera that you just ordered? Um, it was the Canon R5, of course, the Canon R5. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm just I kidding. <laughs> well, you know, actually some people would probably, especially since Sony's been killing it lately, but yeah. I don't, I, I'm sorry, Sony, I can't get on the Sony train yet. <laughs> There's something about you that we just don't jive, uh, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of great people who shoot with Sony cameras, um, yeah. and that's all well and good. But my friend, actually, he's selling his R5, so I picked it up from him. And, uh, Jake? Jake yeah, Bernal. Jake Bernal. Uh, you may know him, you may not. He's really cool. but um, He's worked with both of us in the past. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it should uh, it should ship. Unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town when it comes here. So, oh, didn't... it's coming here when you're out of town. Yeah, it'll, it'll, okay. It should be, I'll be on here. The yeah, keep it, <laughs> keep a, keep a lookout. It should be here in the next week or so. But um, okay, cool. But yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to sell my Fuji film. I love Fuji film. I've been a yeah. Fuji film guy with the XT4 for a while now and the XT3 um, before that. But uh, I just I had to get Canon, especially with the C70 you're shooting on. I felt mm-hmm. like that's going to pair really nicely. And then the jobs that I've been doing outside of YouTube have all been with Canon C200s, R5s, C70s. So it matches that as well. So it just it just made sense. Yeah, and the the guy that you're working with, his name's Jim Cook. He does a lot of corporate videos and and uh, weddings, but. I think a lot of the stuff you're doing is corporate. Uh, uh, mostly, event. yeah. I've I've done a few wedding things here and there with him, but I mostly <coughs> m- mostly enjoy the more corporate travel gigs. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and he's all canon, like he's a, a total canon fanboy. So oh yeah. Um, and he's kind of swears by the R5, even though it had a lot of issues with overheating. The the firmware updates have kind of solved a lot of that. Yeah, there's workarounds with it. I'm kind of curious to see how you like it and how you use it because I've never really used one. Yeah, I used it for a while with Armando and I I did really like it uh, then. The R6 I never really cared for. Uh, I got to mess around with that and it was very okay to me. Mm -hmm. The R5 was just better in most every way except for the overheating, which they've mostly solved. So yeah, I I think it's going to be a good pick. Buying it new is like, you know, pretty expensive, but you're getting a pretty good deal. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a decent deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's still expensive. Yeah. It's still expensive. So yeah, the, the R5 is going to be exciting to play with and definitely I want to do some comparisons with the C70. Yeah. I, you know, the C70 is really great. I did kind of want to get the C70 selfishly Mm -hmm. because I I think it's really cool, but you already have one one by proxy. So I kind of, I really wanted to get an R5. So yeah. So this works out. We can, uh, we can share cameras, but the R5, of course, is going to have a much, uh, more useful autofocus system for Mm. what i do of course the c70 is really great for this right now we're using face only track which the r5 doesn't have but then the tracking on the c70 is not so great we were using that the other day yeah so good so you know you take what you can get from each system yeah maybe we'll use the c70 like as the the tripod studio setup and Mm -hmm. then when we go shoot on location, maybe the R5 is better. I think it would be better. the IBIS. And, and it's also smaller. The only thing we would not have, of course, is the built-in ND. So that's... I know. Yeah, but I could get the uh, RF to EF with the ND adapter. Mm-hmm. So that would solve that. So but then you're not using an RF native lens at that point. Which, yes. Yeah. So. And it's a, Canon's a complicated system. So that's why a lot of people say, you know, Canon's not that great right now. But yeah. I think it's uh, like a future thing because I feel like the RF system eventually is going to be I hope. <laughs> the system. Yeah. So um, I've mentioned before that my cousins uh, let me use the camera that we bought for their company. Um, but we came to an agreement last week uh, for me to actually purchase the C70. So I'm actually now like a legit owner user of the C70. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. I was such a huge fan of the 1DC and the video that I made for Indie Mogul when the C70 came out, <clears throat> came out was kind of like, this is the 1DC I always wanted. Um, but it's also not like, I think the R5C is probably closer to the 1DC. Yeah. Or maybe the Canon R3. Oh yeah. Well, the R3 is like a, yeah, I guess, I guess maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's the like R3. A, 
Because the 1DC was like a 1D flagship with crazy burst rates and mm-hmm. stuff. So, yeah, I guess the R- R3. But um, Although, uh, I don't know. What's the uh, sensor size in the uh, 1DC? Full frame. But when you go to 4K, it crops in a little bit. No, the megapixel count. Sorry. Oh, megapixel? Uh, yeah. It's like... 12, 12 or something it's oh, low. it's, a, it's low. a low i didn't know that actually i don't i didn't know much about the c7 it's like or the 1dc well we made a review on it hey, i don't remember <laughs> that's forever ago <laughs> yeah you were such you're a kid man yeah i know a lot, a lot of times passed we live about 10 minutes from zach's house zach mayfield's house yeah and you know ever since you moved i mean you're already hanging out with him a lot but yeah um, well i used to hang out with him like every day when he was doing kinatika still because yeah. i was helping him with that and that was even further of a drive. So yeah, that was a long, it was a long ways. But now, now we're pretty close, like a good fifteen minutes. And you and him shot a little uh, video recently. Yeah, yeah, I met I met him to work on. I was editing your video actually, and um, we met for coffee. And I was like, dude, you should just like write a fun script for your next video. And he's yeah. like, oh, okay. So he he ended up writing it, and uh, so we we shot it that night, and it was it was pretty funny. Dude, the sound is great. Yeah, he's really good with uh, sound design. Interrogation light. So yeah, so right now it's it's you and Zach. Zach looks like he's in a straight jacket. It's literally it's literally just a jacket that he has, and we just zipped it up behind him, and he's just he's just sitting there crossing his arms like oh, that's this. Perfect. We had a we had a bit where he ended up cutting it because it just needed to not be as long. But he like he went like ah and like protected himself from the light. <laughs> Interrogation light. Has a special frequency that extracts the truth from our subject. <laughs> you look great. Talking. Thanks. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you again. Who? What lighting company do you work for? <laughs> <laughs> Zach's the best. Yeah, we got another one. Grab everything. The 120D, the light dome, swap it all for roto lights. You did good, son. <laughs> okay, I'm probably not going to get... <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely go check out Zach's channel. He's he's doing some really great stuff over there. Just I love it. Yeah, the roto light AEOS2 review. How do you say that? Uh, AOS. AOS. Maybe. Are you going for a EOS thing? Like yeah. Canon? O- EOS. It's quite possible, yeah. Um, yeah, great little intro. Connor's all dressed up like an interrogator. You get the light. <clears throat> dressed up like I was just wearing sunglasses inside at night. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the fun behind the scenes bits that you shared is that that's just in his kitchen with like a pipe and drape, basically. Yeah, yeah. So there's just a he had a black curtain. I was like, well, let's just shoot on this, and we would flip the the scene. So we filmed all of my scenes, and then we put him over there. We flipped the lighting so uh-huh. that the lighting would be on the right side, and then we yeah. we shot it again. It was perfect. Worked out well. It worked out well. Well, over the last week or so, some new Apple stuff came out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of new Apple stuff <clears throat> came out. Obviously, the new Mac Studio, which I think a lot of people in our industry are most excited for. Yeah. Um, starting out at nineteen ninety nine. dollars I'm sure quickly jumps up to more than that. <laughs> but um, basically, you can kind of think of it as like a... It's like they took a Mac Mini, brought into Photoshop, and just ex- extruded it up. Ex- extr- extended? <laughs> it's called extrusion. Like, oh. you, you take a 3D object and just extrude it oh. just make it taller oh, okay um and i think that's actually the case it's the same dimensions as a mac mini but yeah. it's just taller and of course they added a bunch of ports <clears throat> which is great yeah i mean we're looking at a picture here they've got six thunderbolt uh four ports which are all USB-C type uh connectors uh two in the front four in the back ethernet uh the mickey mouse um ears uh for the <laughs> ac power yeah. yeah which is not as uh industry standard as the standard uh you know the infinity loop yeah. looking ones uh, but this adds a ground to it, so it's, it's safer. Um, then you got the standard USB ports, HDMI, headphone jack, and then the kicker, an SD card slot on the front. Yeah. This is awesome. So if you're listening to this, you're in the filmmaking niche, this might be old news to you, but Connor and I both have been working on the M1 Max uh, computers yeah. ever since it came out. Right. Um, you have the 14-inch, I have the 16-inch, mm-hmm. and then... Um, I think we have a similar configuration with the processor, but yeah. some other different settings. But I think yours is a little extra spec than mine, but not by much. <clears throat> yeah, it's. I still am unsure if I should hold on to this or just buy a cheaper one because 
I'm not a huge fan of the giant 16 inch display. Yeah. And also let's be honest, mine's space gray and yeah. is silver. So <laughs> therefore mine is better regardless. I know, but the new, the Mac studio is silver. It seems like they're really embracing the silver. Yeah. Maybe and that's... the monitor has, is silver as that's well. That's true. Okay. So basically my computer won't match with anything. Yeah, it's, yeah. Why don't they make a space gray? Anyways. It, they probably will. Yeah. Six months from now. The more pro version, but... Yeah. Anyways, um, very exciting. Um, I don't think this is the right computer for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I was on the Mac mini and I did enjoy using that, but, um, you know, the way we look at this, like I'm sitting a laptop on a table here. This is very convenient, especially for this type of shoot. Um, that's why, <clears throat> that's why I think this is a little too big because I use my laptop often in this type of scenario. But I do see the, I mean, no, this could potentially work in, in like our workflow. It would just be like an addition to a laptop. So it's like, if you were yeah. to get this and, uh, either the Mac monitor that came out or just yeah. some other monitor, like an LG monitor or something, uh, it would be a great, it'd be a great setup. It, it, you know, everything would flow together really nicely. This thing is mega powerful. What do they call it? The ultra M1. Well, so the. Basically, what I was getting at is that the the two thousand dollar version is the M1 Max version, okay. um, but there's a new chip that they came out with called the M1 Ultra. Ultra, yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, "Ooh, cool Ultra Maze," which is the idea uh, that yeah, I was yeah. Thinking that's thinking about. But that's funny. It's basically two M1 Maxes stitched together. So the power of the <laughs> M1 Max multiplied by two. What uh, will they do next? It'll be two Ultra stitched together. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah, think it's it, maybe it's infinitely scalable. Uh, I don't know about infinitely, but yeah, like that's what they're saying that the Mac pro will be, um, that we'll see a new version that they're, yeah, it's going to be even like twice as powerful as this for the Mac pro. It's already, it's already wicked powerful. It already, yeah. Wickedly powerful as, uh, um, John Travolta would say wickedly talented Adele Tazim. Have you ever seen that? No. That's just a classic. Uh, it's like, it doesn't matter. Um, but (laughs) anyways, um, and then the lower end version too, it's, uh, it's actually not all Thunderbolt. It's, uh, I think two USB C ports on the front, not Thunderbolt. But other okay. than that, the, the two are essentially the same, just a different, um, processor. Yeah. So yeah, if you're a video pr- professional and, um, you don't care about laptops and especially if, I think the interesting thing is that the iMac 27 inch is dead now. They've actually killed that line. You think so? A hundred percent. That's what Apple said. And that's what they're doing. By so like the iMac still exists in the 24 inch uh, model with all the different colors and stuff and yeah. it's got an M1 chip in it. Right. Um, but they made this with the monitor. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have the Mac Mini, you can have the Mac Studio, or the upcoming Mac Pro, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then you buy either the lower end monitor, the Ma- Apple Studio Display, I think is what it's called now. Yeah. Yeah. And, or the XDR, which is even more advanced and crazy. But the studio display is 27-inch 5K retina display mm-hmm. with um, a webcam. It's a 1080p, you know, good enough webcam. Uh, it's got the beam-forming audio mics, and it's yeah. got actually good speakers. So this yeah. essentially is the iMac screen. Um, and if but you think about... a computer in it. Yeah. If you think about the pro market, like... The reason that people were buying 27 iMac, 27 inch iMac, is because that was really the only option. There, there wasn't a Mac Studio mm-hmm. that exist existed, and this is more cost efficient. It, you buy the monitor, and year over year, if you need to update your computer, you just change out the computers and keep the monitor. Right. So, yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, I'm personally considering getting the display. I love using a monitor and I think it's real important to have good ergonomics and Connor and I've been talking about this. Yeah, I know. Cause I'm, I'm editing just on laptop and when you're on a desk, it's just hunched city and, or you raise everything up, but then your hands are up high to yeah. get the display where you need it to be. So exactly. it's not, it's not very uh, good for you. It's not the most ergonomic solution. Um, so I would like to get one. I, I already have a monitor that, that this is so first world, right? Like I already have a good monitor, but yep. Um, a lot of the things that this has would make my life easier in air quotes, having a built-in webcam and yeah. decent speakers. Um, I like using speakers, not only just headphones, but like having decent audio. <clears throat> it helps that the, the MacBook speakers are pretty, are so good. But. Right. The only thing you'd be missing out is on that refresh rate. Cause I was surprised it's yeah. only 60 Hertz. 60 Hertz. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. I, they didn't really advertise it. It took me a second to figure out like the Hertz on the screen, but it's 60. Yeah. It's, it's basically an iMac 27 inch screen, right? you know, in a, a nice, 
what is this? I, I hate these. Like, I know it's like, just get me to, get to the, the thing. website. Yeah. Apple does these like really like I'm, I'm scrolling around here and it's like animating through it. It's I mean, awful. I guess it's cool. The first time you see it, I don't know. I would be annoyed. Yeah. 27 inch, uh, 600 nits of brightness, which is not uh, a lot. Um, yeah. So it's not like HDR. It's P3 wide color, which is good. But yeah. um, <clears throat> if you want the best of the best, obviously the XDR. Right. But I mean, you're six eight grand. You're eight grand. Uh, it's f- is it eight or, or six or four? It's five. five. Oh, so you're nine grand in if you got the Ultra mm. M1 Ultra and this uh, the XDR display. And so it's and pretty. The, X- the XDR is also sixty hertz as well. So okay. neither one of them are high refresh. But that's not really the market. Like no. I, the, the studio display is a, a something that's been needed in the Apple lineup for a couple of years. Like when you use these computers and the, you know, use all the Apple stuff when you use, you can buy like a Dell or whatever mm-hmm. for a pretty cheap price, but you miss out on the ease of use of just like one cable that just plugs in over Thunderbolt and, um, having the, the webcam and the, like this monitor has an A13 processor in it. Yeah. So there's an iPhone chip inside of it. That's better than the current Apple TV. Uh, I mean, it's better than the current Apple TV chip, which, which means in theory, the Apple studio display could get a firmware update that just turns it into an Apple TV. (laughs) I mean, that's kind of cool. I think it's cool. I I really do. I think, you know, it's the classic Apple thing, you know, it's really awesome. It's really sleek. It's really, um, it's really awesome to look at, but it's also expensive. It's like, it feels needlessly expensive, honestly. For, well, I, I get it. It's going to be, it's going to be really nice to me uh, personally. I'm not that impressed by it. Maybe if I saw it, just looking at it on a computer screen, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like, I don't know. It's pretty pricey for what it is. There's lots of really great monitors out there. Not, not 5k monitors with all the Apple ecosystem stuff. None of nothing like that. Well, exists. Of course, of course it's not going to have the Apple stuff. I don't know. I just think like for 2000 bucks, you can get a pretty smoking monitor. Granted, yeah. you may not, you may lose out on the speakers or something or the, the little camera, but if that's not important to you, if you already have a sound system set up, yeah, who, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's cool. It really is cool. I'm sure it'll be cool in person. It's just classic. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a cheap monitor, of course, but, um, there hasn't been an Apple monitor. Like it matches the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. It's you know? true. It is. It is nice. It is a needed thing. It'll be very popular for me. I, I don't get it. <laughs> you don't get it. What do you mean? You, of course, you get it. You, just, you won't buy it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I won't get it. How's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, same for Mac Studio. I, I, I understand it. Yeah. I get it, but I will not get it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm. I think like having the laptop again after being on the Mac Mini. Um, I got the Mac mini cause it was like the cheapest way to get an M one. <laughs> and, uh, I thought I could kind of live with the desktop lifestyle. Um, I did, I did do it, but I would end up carrying the Mac mini with me in my backpack and mm-hmm. like have to bring my mouse and keyboard. And like it was, and you were using, weren't you using like an iPad as a screen or something? <clears throat> I would sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But, um, everywhere I went, I just like would make sure there was a monitor there so I could just use a monitor, right. which isn't terrible. Like, again, ergonomically, it's better to have a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor, but, um, <clears throat> the laptop is just so convenient. I mean, we've even over the last couple of weeks, just like gone out and just edited like mm-hmm. at coffee shops and stuff. And that's something I kind of missed like having, not having a laptop. So I guess you could have done it. It's just been really awkward. You like <laughs> show up with the, the mini, then you pull out a display, then yeah. you, you know, you like, you, you just take over an entire section of the coffee shop. You <laughs> totally. could, you could do it. You could do it. Yeah. It might kick you out, but you could do it. It'd be kind of weird, but yeah, rest in peace. iMac 27 inch. Um, we'll see, maybe there will still be another 27 inch in the future, but right. based on everything I've been hearing and even from Apple themselves, it seems like that they've moved on from that and this is their solution for now. Yeah. It seems like a good idea for them. I think they'll make more money doing it this way. And then the, I don't know. the iMac, uh, still exists and it's more of a consumer product. It's clean. It's all in one. Like that's pe- true. People who want an iMac all in one, they just kind of want to put it in a room, make it look pretty and yeah. not have a bunch of cables everywhere, you know, whereas the other one is kind of more pro. You have all these cables hanging off the back of the Thunderbolt and yeah. SD card slot and all that. So pretty exciting though, that <clears throat> I feel like for the first time and uh, since I can remember, I've been using Apple products since I was 17. So I'm 31 now. So it's been a while. And, mm-hmm. um, 
the 2015 line of computers, like that was the last good laptop. I had an SD card slot, the MagSafe, um, Thunderbolt and uh, USB and all that. Those computers were great. And then the touch bar Macs kind of just ruined that. Yeah. And everything went downhill and same for iMac. Like it was just kind of like, if you want a good Mac, you got to buy an iMac because the Mac pro wasn't very good at the time. Unpopular opinion. I didn't mind the touch bar. Uh, well, I didn't like the fact that like by simply just wanting to change your volume, you had to go one, two slide. Yeah. Like, see, that's what everyone always tells me. And then I go, no, you didn't. You just tap it and drag. <laughs> Okay. But, uh, but yeah, no, I actually, I, I think the tap, uh, wait, and drag, well, just that, but yeah, <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it, I didn't mind it. I think what they made a mistake in is they made too many things attached to the touch bar because overall I really liked it. Cause it had like, you know, different things that I would interact with that normally a keyboard is just not convenient to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And for, I mean, simple thing that's kind of dumb, but true, uh, like emojis. You know, yeah, kind of annoying on a keyboard. You can do the little yeah, keyboard shortcut to get to it, but they're just at the top, <laughs> which is nice. So, well, you know, if you still things. miss, if you miss that, you can just use Sidecar and you get you can have a Touch Bar on your iPad. Oh, that's true. So, yeah, that's cool. Which I've done before. Same for same thing for emojis. Like, yeah, <clears throat> with my Mac Mini, I had my iPad as a Sidecar display and then my main monitor, mm-hmm. and then I would use the Touch Bar in air quotes, the virtual Touch Bar on the iMac. On yeah. the iPad. I will say that this is like overall better still than the touch bar. I just think it could have been cool to have like a, almost like this still, but then maybe at a bar at the top, but I don't know. They didn't seem to really develop much for it. It's just like they made it once and they never really changed it. Yeah. I think if they made all the keyboards have it and it was just like a, every Mac had a touch bar on it mm-hmm. and they developed it and they kept experimenting and trying new things like It'd be they, great, but they, they could have made it cool. Yeah, they didn't. They just kind of left it alone. They only put on the laptop. They didn't make like separate keyboards with that on it. Yeah. So, um, but people who really hate it are developers because all of these uh, keys, the function keys, yeah, that's are true. extremely useful for yeah. developers. And so it's hard to, you can't like by feel, you can't by feel push the touch bar because right. it's a virtual screen, obviously. So that's true. anyways, they... <clears throat> They did this for the for the Pro line, and who knows, they might still have it on the, because they still have it on the M1 Pro, the uh, not yeah the, Pro, the, the, the M1 MacBook Pro, right, which I I actually still have somewhere, yeah, 13 inch, yeah. One. But anyways, um, if you're not an Apple person and you're a PC person and you're you're professional, um, and if you're like very anti Apple, I would encourage you to like try to remove your bias and look at these new. Um, processors because they're really really powerful yeah they're pretty cool i just think it's funny because like remove your bias pc people it's like apple people tend to have the (laughs) the biggest bias when it comes to it's like oh android oh you know it's like anything that's not apple but yes true it is funny yeah these things are truly spectacular yeah i i I recognize that for sure and in the past actually apple computers were technically underpowered compared to pcs right but you could still argue that the software was so integrated integrated that it didn't really matter right um like final cut on a lower end macbook would perform better than premiere on a spec'd out pc just because right. it was so integrated and also just premiere is not that good <laughs> <laughs> as a premiere user i use premiere yeah it's, uh, you can speak to it yeah it's not it, it is good it's just a little clunky sometimes crashes yeah. every once in a while i so. thought i thought the m1 max would fix mm-hmm. premiere crashing mm-hmm. it doesn't <laughs> Uh, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. I still like premiere. A couple of the projects that we've worked on, you, you like, we'll do version one, version two, version three, version yeah. four. And I'm like, why is there four versions? And right. like, cause that's every time it crashes. Every time it crashes, it, you know, like, it's like, Oh, do you want to reopen from our best guess of where you were? And then it creates a copy and I just change it to a new version. Yeah. That's so, hilarious. The whole thing. Yeah. That's why there's four to five versions each project. So, um, Moving on to another topic, we got the GH6 that came out. We did a video on it, top 10. Uh, I could pull that up. Uh, sure. And by the time you're watching this, it'll probably be on uh, the Kinotika previous channel. Yeah, we decided we're probably just going to upload, since we already made it, and we might as well just upload it to the uh, new channel or the new old channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this is, uh, we're just kind of watching it if you're listening. Uh, I won't really uh, play it, but... This was kind of nostalgic. I, I wanted to do this almost as like a, a way to kind of go back to where we started, if you mm-hmm. will. To the um, to the roots. We went to the Opryland Hotel and mm-hmm. we filmed it. 
I think it was a hot, was it a hot day or a cold day that day? I, I think it was, it was a, cold. I think it was a cold day. It was just kind of a cold, but then the, the sunlight was pretty intense. It was, so, like, it was like lunchtime. Yeah. And so we, we wanted to go indoors so we wouldn't freeze our butts off. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you watch the, our infamous Canon M50 review. <laughs> infamous. Yeah. Uh, over a million views now. Yay. Uh, you'll see that's <clears throat> where we filmed um, this new GH6 video, it's the same location. In fact, this like main shot is the same place I stood when I filmed the, the M50 video. Yeah. Although the bokeh looks way better because we're using those contact Zeiss lenses. Oh, I'll miss those lenses. Yeah, the, the Zeiss lenses on the 1DC. Yeah. Are we 1DC. still on the 1DC then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rocking the 1DC with the small HD monitor so you could check focus. Yeah, this one was shot all on the Olympus OM1, yeah. right? Yeah, which was your kind of first time using that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good camera. I see why you like it. Autofocus is good and the IBIS is great. Yeah, the IBIS was the IBIS was really good. And I mean, as I look at it, it's sharp, it's clean, you know, color's good. Mm-hmm. We had to color correct it quite a bit. There's a lot of green in this place. Yeah, everything everything inside the, um, what do they call that, atrium? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, was uh, it's green. So it adds green cast to everything. But, you know, you kind of, <clears throat> you kind of know that going into it, I guess. But um, yeah, this video, you know, it's got 2000 views on it, yeah. <laughs> but we'll see how it does on Kinetica. But, yeah. um, it was a lot of fun to make and we're kind of like, it's kind of like athletes that are like kind of soft and need to get back yeah. into shape. Yeah. Also, we got to like rebuild the channel because it has had nothing for the last three months. So, you know, the YouTube algorithm is going to be real upset. It's going to be like, Hey, where you been? Yeah. Uh, so we got to be like, Hey, no, we're back. We're going to make <laughs> stuff again. We promise. So we got to reconvince them that I think we're, we're back. I don't think it'd be that bad. It was actually worse for me at Indie Mogul, I think, cause they weren't doing a regular anything on that channel. So, right. um, <clears throat> well, I mean, that, that's unfair. They did, they did, Ted did videos, but they didn't do any gear stuff. Right. So I had to kind of start over there too. So I've done it before. I think we can do it. I think Kinetika was has been built the foundation of it on gear. So mm-hmm. I think once we start doing gear that's popular and trending, like uh, it should it should crush. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think it will. But this shot right here, for some reason, I just love the skin tone and the color, and yeah, it's because the, the sun was popping right there. Yeah, and that was not shot log, right? We didn't shoot no. any of this log. Shooting the natural profile, I think, yeah, or the flat profile. I love this shot too. This is a, one of my favorite shots. It's like a moving shot where which is walking and talking and yeah. you're handheld handheld walking backwards no one's telling me where to go i was just kind of yeah <laughs> trying not to trip and fall off that balcony that really shows off the ibis oh. yeah i mean it, it looks really it looks pretty good like it's not too jello at all that's yeah. one thing that i'm a little concerned with with even the r5 they know the ibis is you know a little jello it's kind of wobble wobble yeah on those corners yeah which is kind of weird so maybe i'll just sell my two olympus cameras to buy the new om1 camera there you that's go. what i would like but there you go um yeah gh6 came out pretty exciting you know for people in that world um you know pro, it's got oops it's got pro res internal it can do uh bad autofocus yeah yeah <laughs> it's cool it's a it's a cool camera and if you're a fan of the gh5 you're gonna love this thing like yeah, you exactly. just you just will and i know people who swear by the gh5 and that's great and they get really great results for what we do and what we like, uh, that autofocus cripple is pretty, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it really is. But, um, you know, if you guys have a GH6 or you're pre-ordering one, let us know. Um, I'm curious to hear people's thoughts as they start using it. I'm sure it'll be fairly popular, oh, yeah. um, as the GH5 was so popular, but, um, we saw Batman yes. recently. No, oh, my gosh. If you haven't seen the new Batman movie, the new, the the batman yeah movie. the new the batman yeah the uh, batman it's with uh robert pattinson as yeah. the uh lead and <clears throat> you know i was able to reserve my bias but yeah. i think it's easy to think of him as the twilight guy yeah this will be no spoilers by the way so don't 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 worry yeah, yeah we're we'll, not gonna we'll do keep a... this uh we'll keep this spoiler free but definitely if you haven't seen it you're a fan of like good cinematography mm-hmm. and you're a fan of batman you'll have a good time. Yeah. You know? It was, it was really good. I, I really was surprised. Um, it was kind of like a mystery story that just kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. Yeah. Acting was great. The cinematography was excellent. Yeah. True. Like some really good, unique shots in there that yeah. I was like, I just, Whoa, that yeah, looks really sick. So, and Zach saw it in 4d or whatever. 
Yeah. I've heard mixed reviews on that. One of my friends saw it and said it was awful, but Zach said he liked it. Yeah, I don't I think it's just if you like the fact that your chair is rumbling around and spraying you with water and air or something, then <laughs> you'll like it. I've never tried it. It sounds interesting. Is it a Opryland here or you know, I don't know where you went. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I haven't I haven't I've never even I didn't even know that was a thing. So they're just doing everything they possibly can to get people in the theater. I know. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend The Batman if you haven't seen it, uh, especially if you're a filmmaker. It's really awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to uh, make a new Batman and make it work because the, no- the Nolan films were so good. Yeah. Especially The Dark Knight. And I don't think this... It's, I don't even think it's fair to like even compare it because they're, they're different. Yeah, they're two very different Batman films in a very good way. I wouldn't say like one's better than the other i i maybe would say dark knight's better but yeah i don't know i i dark knight's probably one of my favorite movies period mm. so I, I i think it'd be hard to top it although it was always so hard for me to like believe that rachel was the same because yeah. they're a different actress that's true it was so confusing for me yeah. as a child i was like wait how is that rachel that's not rachel yeah there were things that either film <laughs> rachel there's things that either film you could say technically did better. One of them being in the new one, the Batman suit, he can move in it a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the Dark Knight, it was a little more, you know, shoulders had to go with the head. And this Batman is a little more emotional, if you will. <laughs> so. A little more emo, emo yeah. Batman. But he's, emo a, Batman. he's a, supposed to be like a young Batman, so yeah, it, he's it only, works. He's only been doing it for two years, yeah. apparently, in yeah. this film. So It was well done. Well, well done. Fun to go to the movie theater and, and see something. I, I've... I don't remember the last one I saw. Probably the Joker, which is another DC <laughs> DC film. No, yeah, I, I saw Spider Man. That's true. Spider Man was also great. Yeah. What did I see? Oh, the last movie I saw was the new 007 movie. I saw oh, that. With, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Uh, with uh, Daniel Craig. Yeah, Daniel, the last Daniel Craig movie. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, that one was good too. Yeah, I watched that on a plane. I liked it. What else? I'm growing my hair out. Yeah. Uh, I need to get it cut so that it's all the same, but I played around with the face app recently. It's pretty funny. It looked cool. It worked really well, surprisingly well, uh, in terms of like sort of seeming a little believable, but it's definitely kind of like a fro nose photo kind of. Fro nose photo. (laughs) So. Dot com. So yeah, check it out. There's the, I like that one a lot. It's crazy how. So I started playing with the app because I noticed Tyler Stallman and Jordan Drake were, were messing around with it. Yeah. And it's amazing how, so there's, <laughs> there's Jordan Drake. It's amazing how it works. Like, look at... It looks real. Look at Tyler. Like, the lighting... For, is, the, for the most part. ...is quite perfect in terms of, like... His it, hair color is a little wrong, but it does look good. But it matches, like, he's got a key and a fill and a backlight, and it matches the backlight. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I guess it's, it's using... Machine um, learning. Machine learning. It's kind of like the the thing they did with Luke Skywalker. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, in the Mandalorian show. What's that called again? Face swapping? Face something? But yeah, so this is what my hair is going to look like, which is pretty insane. Yeah. Well, assuming it actually grows down like that, it could also just grow up out. and out. Up and out. <laughs> and yeah, like the, this is, ve- that looks very curly. My hair might not be as curly, but it does seem to have those curls. So yeah. I don't know. It's, <laughs> that one is hilarious. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's funny. We're actually both growing our hair out again. I'm doing it again. Yeah. I, I, you already I, got a head start. Though. Yeah. Well, I grow it out and then cut it and then grow it out and then cut it. So yeah. now we're in the grow out. I save so much money on haircuts. Yeah. Let me tell you. Just once a year, or yeah. like once every two years. Once every few years, get a haircut. It's not too bad. <laughs> so um, anyways. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, be on the lookout for uh, my new channel and uh, I'll link it in the show notes and description of yeah. the video. Uh, the boys are back in town. I should ha- I should have had that lo- logged in. That would have been good. I have eruption, but Eddie Van Halen. Nice. Anyone? Anyone like Eddie Van Halen? Who doesn't? Um. Oh, while we're on the topic of rock and roll, I uh, I was gonna ask. You, I'll ask you now. Um, the Darkness, which is my favorite band, they're playing in April. Yeah. Uh, here in Nashville. Do you want to go with me or not? Sure. When? It's April eighth or something. Okay. Maybe. Possibly. It's a Friday uh, night. I think I have some stuff going on then, but we'll see. It might work out. Well, yeah. Laura doesn't want to go. My dad doesn't want to go. Okay. So, yeah, it's this day. Yeah, you have it marked in your calendar. Look at that. Yeah, right after pay rent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, you've only been to one concert, so that would be your second concert. Yeah, I'm not a big concert music guy. I'm pretty introverted, so. 
But not, I guess you, you don't really get invited often, right? So uh, I don't surround myself with people who go to concerts either, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I don't really go to concerts often, but my favorite band is The Darkness. And They're a pretty cool band. band, actually. Yeah, definitely yeah. give them a look. They're really funny and uh, super fun. So if you like rock and roll, check them out. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Golden Hour Podcast. And uh, go follow Connor, Connor McCaskill on Instagram. Yep. Or Connor underscore McCaskill yeah, because technically. some guy took it. Boo took guy. It. Boo but, guy. Uh, yeah, and then be on the lookout for our upcoming content on the old Kinetica channel that will become the Dave Mays channel. Yep. Um, Connor's also got a YouTube channel if you want to subscribe over there. Yeah, I make content sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> very, very rarely, very rarely, but it's fun. So yeah, thanks for coming on the show, Connor. Yeah, I'm happy I could uh, fill an entire week for you. You're welcome. Oh, this was great. Yeah, I'm gonna drive you to the airport now so you can go skiing. Yeah, yeah, I need to. I need to get to the airport, so we need to end this. All right, thanks guys for listening. Once again, I'm your host Dave Mays. This is the Golden Hour Podcast, brought to you by the St- St- Polar Pro Studio. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time.